Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a system of differential equations. We've done many differential equations before, and this is the first time we're doing a system of differential equations. So this system is fairly easy to solve. So for my first video on systems of differential equations, I wanted to pick something really straightforward. So don't you know, be mad at me just because this problem is too easy. I know some people are going to be happy. You know, it, it varies. Everybody's different. Some people are very strong. Some people are not that strong. But no matter what, this is going to be a nice problem. Anyways, so we have this system where we have dx over dt equals xy and dy over dt equals y plus 1. So let's talk a little bit about how this works. Normally, we have uh, y is a function of x. So when you're given a differential equation, you're, you usually have something like this. Let's say y double prime. I think one of the recent videos was like y double prime equals x plus y. We could use this as an example. All right, here we go. That's the video. So for this one, notice that y is a function of x. So we can write y as f of x. And then y double prime basically means uh, to differentiate. So y prime means dy over dx. I'm not going to worry about that weird writing. Hopefully you don't worry about that either. And y double prime is just going to be the derivative of the first derivative. Obviously you can also write it with the d squared y over dx squared and some people you know don't like that notation or they think that it's abuse of notation. Whatever that is, it's a notation, right? No big deal. So that is the single case. Like we have a function of x and so on and so forth. But in this case we have both y and x as a function of t, which is usually time. Okay, great. So y is a function of t. So we can basically write this as like, okay, y is like f of t and x is like g of t. And we're basically talking about solving for x and y, obviously, in terms of t. Let's go ahead and do that. When you look at an equation like this, the first one looks kind of separable because x and y are separated. But guess what? We're going to start with the second equation because second equation is easier to handle. Why? We only, the answer is y, because we have y plus 1 on the right-hand side. We don't have any anything else. We don't have a t. We don't have an x. So that's pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and start solving the second equation first. All right, great. So in order to solve that, um, I'm going to turn this into a separable differential equation. So I'm basically going to divide both sides by y plus 1 and put the dt on the right-hand side. And then the rest is going to be fairly easy. You're just going to integrate, right? And then since both y and uh, x are functions of t, we're going to differentiate with respect to t. But in this case, we have dy, so just differentiate. I mean, did I say differentiate? Integrate. Okay, we're going to integrate both sides. When you integrate y plus 1, you get ln y plus 1. You know that there are two cases here. We're supposed to write the absolute value of y plus 1. But if we assume that y plus 1 is positive, you know, we can just... Um, safely write this as ln y plus 1. The other case is fairly straightforward, so I'm just going to assume that y is greater than negative 1. Therefore, ln uh, y plus 1 is always positive. Okay, great. The rest is easy. You know, the other case is also similar. So you can write it like this. And then from here, we can basically solve for y, right? Let's do e to the power of both sides. e to the power ln y plus 1 equals e to the power t plus c, which can be written as e to the power t times e to the power c. But guess what? c is a constant, therefore e to the power c is also a constant. So I can call it k. Now this becomes e to the power ln y plus 1. Now e to the power ln something is something. So this becomes y plus 1. And the right hand side can be written as k times e to the power t. Awesome. So we can go ahead and isolate y from here, and that is just going to give us the solution for y, which is really cool. This was a very easy equation. So even if uh, we, this wasn't a system, we could still solve the second equation, kind of like a standalone um, equation. Okay, great. So y equals this. Now, how can I use this information to solve for x, right? So because we have to solve for both x and y. Now, consider the first equation. We have dx over dt. Let's rewrite it. We have dx over dt equals x times y, right? So the derivative of x with respect to t just happens to be the product of x and y, and we're supposed to find x from here. But guess what? We already have y, so we can go ahead and plug it in. That's why this equation or system is very straightforward, because we just solve the second equation, and then you just plug it in. So we're going to replace y with k times e to the power t minus 1. Awesome. And then 
This is also a separable differential equation, and we're just going to solve this for x. Let's go ahead and put the dx and x together, and the t guys, or the t part with the dt. Awesome. All right, great. So we have, uh, we can integrate both sides, right? That should be fairly straightforward. Uh, I can pick a color. Let's use this one. All right. When you integrate both sides, you're going to get on the left-hand side. Again, we get the ln, but allow me to use positive values of x. I know some people are going to be mad because I didn't state it at the beginning. But anyways, this could be written as ln x or ln negative x if uh, x is negative. And then the right-hand side, think about it. e to the power t is the derivative of e to the power t, so its integral is the same. So this is just going to be the same k times e to the power t, right? And then minus, since we're integrating uh, with respect to t, this is just going to be t. And of course, I do need another constant. You can use c1, you can use m, anything will work. Some people use c1, c2, c3, but I just don't like those subscripts. Okay, great. So this is not x, it's ln x. What am I supposed to do? Well, we're supposed to do e to the power of both sides again. Let's do it. That's going to be fun. And now we get this. And obviously, e to the power m can be separated. Let's go ahead and do it. But by the way, e to the power, what is e to the power ln x, right? Like before, it is just x. Okay, great. What would happen if x was negative? Let's talk briefly about it. Like if this was the absolute value and x was, uh, you know, uh, negative and you wrote it as ln negative x, then in this case, you would just do e to the power ln negative x and that would be negative x. And everything else would be, would be the same except you would have negative x on the left-hand side. Or of course, if you consider the different values of y, the exponent would also be different here. But those cases are very... Uh, straightforward and very easy to do. Anyways, let's focus on this now. I can write this as e to the power k e to the t minus t and then times e to the power m. But notice that e to the power m is a constant. So we can write this as we're kind of running out of constants here. What should we use? Maybe an n maybe? n would be okay, right? Okay, great. La don't use x, y, z because they're usually saved for uh, non-constants. Anyway, so from here we get the following, x equals n times e to the power k e to the power t minus t. So it's kind of like a weird exponential where the, the exponent is an exponential minus a linear. And then we have the value of x from here basically, right? Let's go ahead and take a look at the y. We found y equals k e t k e to the power t minus 1. And basically this gives you a solution to the system, right? And then what is that supposed to mean? We were not given any initial values such as, you know, um, x of, uh oh, sometimes, you know, if x is a function of t, then we can also write it as x of t. So maybe if we were given something like x of 0 is equal to 1, so on and so forth, something like that, then we could plug it in and find some of these constants or maybe all of them, right? But since we were not given, this is the general situation. But uh, if you replace k and n with any real numbers, then you're going to get a bunch of solutions. One thing to keep in mind here is that these k's are the same. Therefore, they're kind of dependent. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.